How the BLM narrative affects our ability to think and act free in America. This is a topic report. And I touched on this a little bit earlier when it came to how it is that the factions are preventing us from having an adult conversation about policing in America because the right perceives that it must defend the police at all costs because the left is using attacks on the police to undermine more than just bad police behavior. They're seeking to undermine the very the notion of the Bill of Rights itself. And this, and then on, on the left, the, the, they, they have to defend everyone and anyone that is involved, well, every black man that is involved in a police shooting, no matter what, they have to bury the truth. They have to prevent us from really understanding the nuances because they are absolutely seeking to destroy King Bill because King Bill is an impediment to their agenda. Then we have this. BLM, America, and you. Rashida Talib steps up to offer an absolute insane take on the Duante Wright shooting. This, this is from Red State. This is a right uh, from the right. The shooting of Dante Wright in Minneapolis, which appears to have been an accidental. Oh, my gosh. An accidental. This is what I'm talking about from the right. There you go. To have been an accident appears to have been. Again, they have to defend this territory. So they have to make him bad. They have to make her good. The, the police officer involved because they're protecting King Bill or they think they're protecting King Bill. But never, never mind that the right never continue, consistently follows the Bill of Rights itself, and no faction does. Uh, well, I would argue no faction does. Uh, which appears to have been an accidental discharge after he attempted to flee from police in a car has already led to rioting and looting. Last night, things got out of hand again. The media made excuses, and the city council voted to prohibit police. I don't know. You're not going to get to the point. You should have just got it right there in the little excerpt for me. Do be, oh, and here's Louder with Crowder, one of the worst on the right. Protester, destroy CNN live on air. Get the F out of here. And maybe the protester kind of understands that a lot of these, see, especially the black people, that when, when, you, when I see a bunch, I said this before, when it's a bunch of white people burning down buildings in the name of social injustice or whatever, I'm highly skeptical of their motivations. These are mostly well-to-do suburbanite kids living out their reckless uh, war fantasies but in general when you see a bunch of black people in a poor neighborhood that are going out and doing things these folks have all kinds of legitimate reasons to be truly truly frustrated uh, but i would love to see studies on how police treat people in poor communities across the country and i think that what black americans are going to be surprised to find is that white americans in poor communities experience many of the same type of discriminations. This is really about power. It's, it's about perceptions of power. Now, I will say, I also believe that there is something beyond merely, it, I, I guess maybe merely the difference between poor and, and people of means in that I do think that there is still ongoing stigmatizations re regarding black Americans and police. I don't have, I, I suspect that police have are, they're, they're simply more afraid of black people than they are white people. And they're more uh, ready to believe the worst about black people than white people. And I think that's a real problem in policing today. And I love to have those conversations, but it's difficult. It's difficult because the minute that you that you say, okay, I kind of agree to this, the, the quote-unquote left, mostly white suburbanites, will use that to say something insane like, Democrat Rashida Tlaib calls for no more policing. <laughs> No more policing following the shooting death of, of Dante Wright. And this is from ChristianHeadlines.com. Democrat Rashid, Rashida Tlaib calls for no more policing. Yeah, called for no more policing policy. No more policing after a 20-year-old black man named Dante Wright was fatally shot by Minnesota police officer Saturday. And this is, this is the, the BLM narrative is basically, listen, there is systemic hateful racism across the board everywhere. There's this thing called whiteness that we have to stamp out. Now, I want you to think about the logic. If you're a white person, if you're a white American, what the BLM has constantly been saying on one hand is you can't be white because white is whiteness and whiteness is a fundamentally evil thing. And then white people can't culturally appropriate. So what is the alternative? It's death. It's death. 
It's simply death. And that's, I think, white people are getting that message. So because of this, white people, understandably, I'm still going to, especially amongst my Christian friends, not rightly, but understandably, they don't want to hear about racism. They don't want to hear about the real underlying cause, you know, so-called. Now, I know when when the BLM uses systemic racism, it's, it's certainly way more invidious than how I, I, I think of it in my head. But there is systemic racism. And I do believe amongst policing, in the policing world, yeah, there's systemic racism that black people are much more at risk when they get pulled over to have something bad happen to them merely because of the color of their skin. But white Americans can't have that conversation. You can if you're a Christian, because if you're a Christian, you align with Christ. You don't align with these powers. Come what may, we align with the truth. And the truth is that uh, there is systemic racism in police departments, as I see it, not in the same way that in the same way that the BLM uses that term. But we can't have those conversations because white people are afraid. They're afraid of giving any more ground than they perceive that they already have, because every time they've given ground, the militants have stepped into the void and said whiteness. And they're instituting in our schools a program where they're telling white babies about their sin skins, about their whiteness, about the sin skins of their parents, and, and, and driving divisions in families, creating hostility and hatred between children and their parents. It's pretty horrible what's going on. And I'm still going to align with truth, come what may. And so the BLM is preventing us as... As the and, and, and BLM is, is, is absolutely corporate. It is corporate nationalism. They are corporate nationalists. They're funded by corporate nationalists. They serve the corporate nationalists. The corporate nationalists are using them to consolidate their power even more. The black Americans who serve in the BLM are serving mostly white billionaires, and they don't really understand that. And we're not able, once again, just like with policing, we're not able to have adult nuanced conversations about quote-unquote race in America. And I think I'll end my report there.